As an architect, when it comes to designing a new house or any commercial property, there's one thing that we truly have to consider. The site is so important and so critical, yet sometimes it's so difficult to get a surveyor out on site to actually give you the information you need. What's going on guys? My name is David Tomich and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you exactly how you can use an M1 iPad Pro, take it out onto site, LiDAR scan that entire site, basically creating a 3D map of the contours and the levels, the road, the shrubs, the fences and everything surrounding it to be able to import it into ARCHICAD and then create a 3D mesh from that information. Now I have previously created a video on M1 LiDAR scanning, but all of you guys wanted to see it in action in the real world as an architect. So last night I went out onto site, next door to me there's a nice big empty block and I LiDAR scanned the entire property. It was my number one recommended app back in that video. If you haven't seen it, go back and check it out. There's a whole bunch of different LiDAR scanning apps out there that do all sorts of different things. But this one personally resonated with me the most, so I really wanted to use it outdoors and test it out in a real world situation. Now, full disclosure, you have to go to the paid version of Scanniverse to be able to export it out into ARCHICAD. But thankfully, they give you a seven day free trial so you can sign up and cancel your subscription straight away if you just wanna test it out. I managed to figure out a few pros and cons with the scanning of the site itself. First of all, you can't scan any sort of shrubbery, any sort of wild grass or anything like that. The LiDAR simply just doesn't pick it up. It'll try, but all you'll see is giant pink and red white lines on your screen because it's not picking anything up. So the site has to be relatively clear and clean. Thankfully, in my situation, most of the site was predominantly rock or sand or a little bit of really light grass it was able to pick up all of this without a fault. It really started to struggle in the very dark corners because I did this at about 5.30 at night when the sun was setting and it was getting really dark because it's been raining here non-stop. So this was my only opportunity to go out on site and actually scan it with the LiDAR system. It also failed to pick up any of the wild grass, the really tall grass. So a lot of little bits and pieces were just big empty holes that weren't scanned. However, I do believe it was able to pick up a solid 98%, maybe 99% of the site's critical information that were needed for me to take it into ARCHICAD and actually develop a site mesh. Okay, so now we're gonna take that 3D LiDAR scan and import it directly into ARCHICAD. As always, we're starting with the Australian Select template. So it doesn't matter what you guys have available, just use the basic templates supplied with your ARCHICAD version. Scaniverse actually allows you to export a whole number of different actual file types so that you can import what you need into ARCHICAD. ARCHICAD can import a number of different file types, but STL files seem to be the most compatible with what we're trying to work with today. Now the easiest way to open up an STL file from Scaniverse is going file, open, open, and selecting the file you want to open. Scaniverse has opened up here for us today. Now I have to warn you, it is incredibly slow even on my desktop. So it is not something that we wanna be doing all the time unless you wanna be ripping your hair out and being bold very, very quickly but it does import the 3D mesh and it gives you something to work with. So what I'm gonna do is actually orientate this mesh properly and move it around as best as I can. So I'm just gonna simply draw a quick wall over here so I have my point of reference in 3D to actually orientate this entire site. So moving into 3D, we'll see that my wall has been drawn and that scan has come in at a very odd angle. So that is the back of the block, that is the road up the top that we're speaking of. So what we wanna really do is find one of these mesh points near the road that I can tell is the curb line, that's the road and that is the footpath. So I'm gonna select this mesh in its entirety. So let's try grab one of these endpoints here 
clicking on that tool, dragging it all the way to the corner of our wall so we have an optimal position to work from. Clicking the Command E button to open the Orientate tool, which allows me to move, replicate, and basically do whatever I like with this site mesh. Now I'm gonna scroll around to the back, fly to the back as much as I can, select my mesh, and select a vertical point on this mesh to basically orientate it. So I can select that polygon, rotate it directly 90 degrees so I know I have a flat edge to work with. So if I zoom back out, I should now be able to see that is horizontally perfectly aligned. Now all I have to do is select that mesh once more, click Command E once again, f rotate that directly on my wall using it as my axis holding shift, rotating it up 90 degrees. And now by clicking escape in theory, we should have that site mesh orientated perfectly onto our site as we see it. Now we can commence by creating a 3D mesh by using the mesh tool in ArcCAD and slowly moving our points up to create this mesh like we see. So let's delete this wall that we've created before, simply clicking on it and tapping the delete button. Again, my computer is running so slow because of how much space and how many polygons this mesh takes up. It kind of looks like a race car if you look at it, but that is the actual site that we have scanned. Road down here, driveway coming up, flat bit of land, another bit of hill, flat bit of land, and the fences around the side. Now, I'm not sure if you guys have noticed, but this channel has been blowing up. So firstly, thank you so much for joining this community. It really means a lot to me. Those of you who've been on this channel for a very long time have been asking the same questions over and over again. You're asking me all the time, how do I take my work to that next level? How do I really stand out from the crowd? And how do I get a job in the profession? Now, today I've partnered up with Zyro, who are today's video sponsors. They are a website building platform that can help you take your game to the absolute next level. With their platform, you can literally build a whole digital portfolio in a matter of minutes, or even sell your digital designs online and reach a much bigger audience than you ever could before. The possibilities with Zyro are actually limitless. The best part about Zyro is they're nothing like their competition. They are so, so affordable. Their customer service is 24 seven round the clock and their website load times are lightning fast. The last thing you wanna do is spend all of your time building a beautiful website and then people clicking on it, waiting for it to load. It didn't take me long to figure out the drag and drop system of Zyro. It was very, very simple. You find a beautiful template out of hundreds that they have available. You pick your favorite one and you basically just start going through and changing all the elements to suit you, your brand, and what you're trying to create. So even when I did get stuck, thankfully they have 24 seven support, so I didn't have to sneak in a quick email. During business hours, I could literally just ask them any time of day or night to help me out. I think the best part about Zyro though is the simple fact that you don't need any coding knowledge whatsoever. Now obviously I have a very good background in technology and IT as well as architecture, but truly I didn't really stumble upon any giant hiccups that anybody wouldn't be able to do. So if you are a novice looking to just start your first website, Zyro is the perfect place to start. Even if you're an experienced website builder looking to innovate and improve on your digital marketing or your e-commerce store, this is exactly what you're looking for. And as we all know, everybody's moving away from the computer and onto the tablet. Zyro is fully cross compatible between your mobile devices, your tablets and your desktop. So all you have to do is create one beautiful website and the rest is done by Zyro. Now, because I don't like teaming up with companies that basically give me something and give you nothing, I truly wanted to make sure that this partnership was mutual across the board. So Zyro has been generous enough to give you guys three months free with any yearly purchase. So if you wanna get three months free on your website, check out the link down below. It is the very first link in the description box. Otherwise, you can literally just type in my name, David Tomich, in the checkout and get that discount automatically applied. What we're gonna do is simply select our mesh tool 
and then commence by drawing a simple square. So let's use the basic geometry tool. I'm probably gonna go to the outskirts a little bit, selecting the basic geometry polygon tool. I'm gonna go around the edges of this fence line that I'm assuming is the fence, clicking ever so generically at this point in time to create our generic square mesh that will go underneath. Now if we come back into 3D, we'll see we've created our mesh underneath. Now there are two ways of doing this mesh and one's the quick and easy way and one is the painstaking way that you will absolutely go crazy about. So the quickest and easiest way to do this, which is still a little bit time consuming, is simply dragging the absolute pinnacle of that mesh that you've created all the way past so it surpasses our scanned 3D mesh, making sure that the perimeter of our mesh covers all of our scanned site plan that we're trying to duplicate so we can get rid of this 3D scan and speed up our computer. So we're gonna drag out the sides just a little bit further and then we're gonna right click, connect, solid element operations. We're gonna get this dialog box pop up over here. We're gonna add that as our target operator. We're gonna deselect the new mesh we've created. We're gonna select our morph, which is our scanned STL file. We're gonna add that as our operator and we're gonna subtract with an upwards extrusion. And then all we're gonna do is hit execute, wait a very long amount of time for this to process and then we're gonna start dragging and dropping a few of the little bits and pieces so it, all the areas that we missed on that scan are in line with where they should be. Okay, so now if I close my solid element operations, open up my layers and look for morph general, I can turn that off and hide our morph. So now our computer will function so much quicker and we can see that we've cut most of this mesh to where it should be. Now, obviously it isn't perfect. There's all these pinnacles all the way through, but we can adjust that now with the computer operating a lot quicker. Okay, so we don't actually need all of this extra on the outside now. So what we're gonna do is simply drag back in our mesh, just like we dragged it out before, so we can cut off a large section of unnecessary land. It's gonna take a little bit of time to process I'm gonna work my way through around all four edges and jump back to you guys relatively quickly. Okay, so now we've trimmed off all the edges and we have a general site left over. There's still a few little bits and pieces here that you can see that are sticking out way too much because the site and the scan just wasn't able to pick it up, but we can see a majority of how the actual site works relatively well. So the best thing we can do now is go back to our ground floor plan add a series of hotspots around so we can adjust it in 3D again. So moving back to our story zero, all we're gonna do is go to the mesh tool, double click and start adding a few hotspots around. Now, when we go back to 3D, we simply click on our mesh, we'll see all those hotspots added. And what we're gonna do is spin the camera around to the side and slowly adjust each one of these hotspots to the edge of our actual mesh. So again, this is gonna take a little bit of time. All I'm gonna do is click on one, adjust the elevation point mesh, drag it down all the way. I'll probably drag it exactly to where the mesh is. Press okay and let it do its thing. I'll work my way around as again, this is gonna take a significant amount of time. It isn't the most ideal method and the most ideal approach, but it is very good to know how much technology has progressed and what we are able to do in a limited amount of time. Okay, and there we have it. I've made my entire way around this model, dragging all those hotspots all the way to the bottom and finishing off with what is as close to our mesh underneath as possible. Now, as you can see, that morph underneath is still basically contributing to the overall look and feel of this site mesh but what we have done is successfully replicated a landmass on Archicad by simply using our iPad and the technology inside Archicad. Anyway, that's all for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something with this LiDAR scanning 
for the M1 iPad Pro with a real life scenario placed in front of you. I will be taking this design further as the channel continues to progress. I'll be putting an actual design onto this site mesh and creating more ARCHICAD content for you guys to follow along and learn. If that's something that interests you, make sure you smash that subscribe button down below to join this community. There is a Discord link down below as well if you wanna join the private chat community filled with architects, designers, students from across the entire world, just basically helping each other grow as individuals and professionals. But that is all from me today, guys. Thank you so much for being a part of this community. Like always, I will see you next Monday.